Good evening, everybody. I hope you all are well. We're so excited to be here uh, for our first live, just for a class of the year. Um, and as you all probably know, the topic tonight is uh, we're doing a tutorial, which is a little bit different than what we usually do, which is teaching and classes. But tonight, we're doing a tutorial on a tool that we often recommend that many people ask, of, ask us about, which is Blue Letter Bible. So we're going to talk about that and maybe even some other um, Bible tools out there that are helpful during your study time, because we know in 2023, we're going to make this a year of the word. Amen. If you agree with that, go ahead and put in the comments, amen, because we're excited to grow in God and in his word this year. So we want you to help us out um, in doing that in a couple ways. Number one, um, if you are on Facebook, if you can go ahead and put the share button and share this to groups, pages, tag somebody that you know. In addition, um, in addition, thank you. In addition, um, if you're on YouTube, click the share button and you'll get a link that is shareable because we want to have a great time. We're going to get right to it in just a few minutes, um, but we're going to open up. And so before we do that, can you all help us by sharing this? I'm going to go do what I'm asking you all to do. So remember, if you're on Facebook, just click the share button. You can share it. Um, to a group or share it with somebody or tag somebody because we want to make sure that we know how to dig into the word for ourselves. You all know the scripture says in Proverbs 4 verse 7, I'm actually going to pull it up probably at some point tonight, but what it lets us know is that we want to with all our getting get understanding. And so one of the blessings of the time we live in is there are lots of tools accessible that can help us do that. And we don't want to just go to a Google and just find random information. We want to go back and look at when the scriptures were written, what was meant, what did it say, et cetera, et cetera. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. I'm going to go ahead and do like I'm asking you all to share this video. Um, if you are again on Facebook, share it uh, onto your page for us. And if you are on YouTube, you can do the same by clicking and sharing. So that's what I'm going to do. I just shared it on my page. All right. I see some comments that say, amen. Awesome. I see the sisters in the comments say, amen. Brothers, where are y'all at? We're all going to dig into the word of God tonight. So with that said, Pastor Harris is going to be on shortly. He is on somewhere. And so we're going to get him on in a few um, to provide some uh, context and other information as we're using this tool. Um, so with that said, um, we're going to go ahead and get to it um, tonight. Like we've said, it is a tutorial. Our goal is to walk through a tool that is helpful, but we're going to start, um, of course, with a word of prayer, and then we'll look at a few of the scriptures. Sound good? And there's Pastor Harris. Wonderful. And so I'm going to let him have words and open this up with prayer, and then we will get to, um, to what we've got planned tonight. So would you like to go ahead and open this up, Pastor Harris? I love to, and I'm just thankful that uh, that I made it here after getting locked in the stairwell and all. But we're here, and what you're about to do, I think, will be most insightful and most helpful uh, to our audience as we move along all of 2023. Tish, they'll be able to use what they learned tonight in every class in 2023, right? <laughs> yes, and they'll be able to use this for every subject they study from here on. Absolutely. Let's pray. Father, we say thank you for allowing us to be here. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to share with your people. God, we pray, God, that you give clarity of thought, clarity of speech, give wisdom, give knowledge and understanding like only you can. In Jesus' name, amen, Jesus. amen. And Tish, this ball is in your court. Awesome. So uh, I want to give a little bit of context first of why are we going to go back and dig into this? I am blessed to uh, share with a group of elementary and middle school students once a week. And lately we've been talking about digging into the word of God and using tools like Blue Letter Bible. And so we started off talking about why do we even do this, right? And one of the reasons why we take the time to dig into the scriptures the way we do is because we want to get understanding. So let's pull up that scripture really quickly. And I'm actually going to pull it up on my favorite Bible study website. Blue Letter Bible is a wonderful resource, but my number one favorite Bible study website is what we're going to start on. And then we'll go to Blue Letter Bible. Okay. So let's go ahead and share my screen. And I am on justword.com. And this website, as many of you all know, we have an academy that you can sign up for free. And in that academy, you can access courses, learning paths, a library, 
Well, one of the extras is a Bible. So we're going to pull up the scripture on here first, and then we'll make our way towards Blue Letter Bible. So on that Bible, I'm going to pull up our, our, our theme scripture that we're going to use for this tutorial, which is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Okay. And it says, um, since I'm leaving this tonight, I'm not going to ask Pastor Harris to read, <laughs> but we will have him break down some things at some point. So in Proverbs chapter four, verse seven, it says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all thy getting, get understanding. So when we use different Bible study tools, whether it's Blue Letter Bible, whether it, uh, there are a range of apps, websites and um, books with dictionaries and concordances that people use for Bible study. But our goal is to get understanding, right? And though we could run um, to all kinds of places, we have to be careful of what tools we use, um, what we're getting from those tools, and how we evaluate it in comparison to the Word of God. And so our goal is not to look to things outside of the Word, but to dig into when God wrote the Scripture, what was actually meant. OK, and so if I am looking at a word, um, I'm looking at a verse, I don't want to go to Google, which is a resource that is 412 years after the Bible was translated into English. Right. I'd rather go back and look at what um, was originally said and what we can find throughout the scripture in English or the original language languages of Hebrew and Greek. So with that said, Blue Letter Bible is a tool that we often reference. Um, and so even when you're on my favorite Bible study website, which is justword.com, which you should sign up for Just Word Academy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up just a blog on our website. I am logged in. Um, and so when you're logged in, you can access our library. And so that's where I'm going to go first. And so if I'm in the library, I can pull up a range of books. I'm going to expand this, but I'm specifically, I want to go to a blog. Okay. And if we were in person, I'd let you all help me pick. But since we're not, I am going to pick a blog. And so, um, for example, let's pick how do I overcome fear and doubt. And so if you're on Just Words website, you can access courses, classes, videos, learning paths, etc. But what you'll notice is if a verse is mentioned, if you hover over it, you'll see the scripture. And you'll notice that it's powered by Blue Letter Bible. And if you click on a verse, it's going to take us to the tool we're going to focus on tonight which is Blue Letter Bible. Many times when we have classes or when Pastor Harris is teaching, he'll show the scriptures and do many of these similar things on a tool called PC Study Bible. And so um, what's great about Blue Letter Bible is that it is a free option. PC Study Bible does some things that Blue Letter Bible doesn't. And so Pastor Harris is the expert on PC Study Bible and can answer questions about that. But tonight, what we're gonna focus on is Blue Letter Bible because it is free, because you can access it online, as well as as an app on tablets and, and on phones, okay? And so uh, Danny, Pastor Harris, at any point, if there's something I should hit or I'm going too fast, y'all tell me, okay? That's it. So how do you access Blue Letter if you're online? Yep, so great question, Pastor Harris. <laughs> so if you're online, um, you just go to blueletterbible.org. If you go to Google, you can search for it, but if you go to blueletterbible.org, um, it is a website that allows you to dig into the original languages of scripture. OK, and so we're going to look at a few things you can do tonight. Number one, we're going to look at using Blue Letter Bible as a concordance where you can search for words and identify where they are in scriptures and classify them. And we'll have Pastor Harris talk about that. We'll talk about how you can use this as an interlinear to look back at the original text, what was written. We'll look at it as you can look up definitions for Hebrew and Greek words. And then last but not least, we'll mention a bit about where you can find the original Hebrew letters and the pictographs, okay? So I'm gonna pause there. Our goal is to get understanding and we wanna use the right tools to dig into not something outside of scripture, but we wanna dig deeper into scripture because understanding is about breaking it down, okay? And the goal is in addition when we're, not only that when we study on our own, we get understanding, We'll pull up one more thing that comes to my mind um, when I was preparing for this class, which is Acts chapter 17. So when we look in Acts chapter 17, and I'm on Blue Letter Bible now for this one. Um, and so in Acts 17, it talks about the church at Berea. And the Bible talks about how Paul and Silas went by night unto that place. But what I like is verse 11 and 12. Pastor Harris, would you like to read? I'll read 11 and 12. <laughs> yes, please. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, 
in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. Okay, great. And so what I like in this verse is another reason that we would want to use a tool like Blue Letter Bible. Um, one, we use it to get understanding on our own. But what was great about this group, the Bereans, were when they received the word, the Bible says they received it with readiness of mind. And we could use a tool like Blue Letter Bible to see what is meant by readiness of mind. But also the Bible says they search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. And something I've learned to do as I hear the word taught is I, if someone tells me something means something or something comes from something or something has a certain pictographs, we want to be able to search the scriptures for ourselves to see if those things are so. And so there have been ways to do that throughout history. In the time we live in, we do have some online tools and we're going to look at Blue Letter Bible as one. Okay, I'm going to pause there. Pastor Harris, would you like to summarize? <laughs> or Would you like to say anything? Um, no, I, I think that you've laid the groundwork as to why we're doing this class. Um, I think it's summarized um, in Matthew 13 that the, uh, the parable of the sower, the seed that was heard that was by the wayside, even though it was received into the heart of the person, the Bible said the wicked one came and caught it out of their hearts yep. because they didn't have understanding. And so again, Jeremiah 3.15, he's raising up pastors to feed his people with knowledge and understanding in Proverbs 4 and 7 and all that getting, get an understanding. I think that summarizes what you are about to do and the importance of what you're about to do and why everybody needs to tune in and be focused right now so that they don't miss one jot or tittle. Because guess what, Tish? Yep. Heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or one tittle of the law changes. We got to get the commas. We got to get the iotas. And that's what you are about to show us how to do using Blue Letter Bible. Awesome. That was a great summary. <laughs> so with that said, let's go now to Blue Letter Bible. And so if you go, you can access this on your phone, on your computer, or, in, or on a tablet. We're going to use it on the desktop. And everything I'm doing, minus one thing that I can think of, you're able to do from a mobile device. Um, it might be slightly different to get there. And so maybe at the end of the video, I'll connect my phone and show you all how to do it. But for now, we'll focus on the online portion, okay? So the first way we can use this website um, is as a concordance. And so um, with, when we say a concordance, we're, we're pulling up um, different words uh, in scripture where they are found. And so you can use it essentially as a search engine. So if you are searching um, the Bible for a certain topic, Blue Letter Bible allows you to search through the scripture for that word. So Pastor Harris, can you give us a word that we can use for our first search? For our first one, our very first word. Uh, how about, we, we did this in our uh, Born of Water so they could follow along, but how about word would be our first word? Yep, uh, that's a great one. So if we go to the scripture and we just search word, we can put it in, type it in, that simple. And it tells me, according to Blue Letter Bible, um, that this is occurs not 697 times in 673 verses in the King James Version. Blue Letter Bible defaults to the King James Version, but let's say I'm studying the Spanish scripture. I can go to the Reign of Valera 1960 and search that as well. But it defaults to the King James Version, which is what we use here. And so I can see using that concordance simply here the first time word is used in scripture, which is Genesis 15 and 1. Um, but then I can also go through and something that we've I've learned from Pastor Harris to do is I can go through this and I can start looking at, OK, just from an English level, what the word is, where it's used in Scripture and how it's used in Scripture. For example, a pattern we see here um, is first time it's used is after these things, the word of the Lord came into Abram in a vision. The first time word is mentioned, it's the word of the Lord. That makes sense in the Bible, right? The second time it's mentioned, we see the word of the Lord. And in both of them, it says the word of the Lord came. And then the word of the Lord came. And then in Genesis 30, 34, it says, behold, I would it might be according to thy word. So I could go through 
each of these and identify just in the context of the verse and the chapter, what's happening on, what's the word. And so I know um, one time at church, we were learning how to study. And so we took a word and we went through where it was and we started putting it into categories based on how it's used. So the first way we can use this is as a concordance. And so with that, thank you. And so with that, when we search, um, you can pull up just like it is right now. I'm just pulling it up in English, word, and we can see all the times word is used. I will say there are some great search options. So let's say I'm not just looking at word throughout the Bible. If I click on the advanced options here, I can narrow down what books of the Bible I want to look at. So maybe I want the whole Bible, or maybe I just want to search for word in the New Testament. So let's do that. Instead of just doing the Bible, which is the default, let's go to the New Testament. So now I have that as advanced options. And you see it says there are options set in advanced options. So it's letting me know I'm not searching the whole Bible. But if I click go, now I can pull up verses in the New Testament in the King James Version that show um, the word word. So here, the first time it's mentioned, it says he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again. And so we could go through now the New Testament scriptures. So one, I can automatically just search the whole Bible. Number two, I can narrow down my options. So you see, I can go to New Testament. Maybe I just want to go to, um, I don't know. We can pick any of these categories. I wish I were here because I'd make y'all tell me a category, but we could pick the Pentateuch. Did I say that right? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so that's the first five books of the Bible. I could go through any of these sections, or I can pick a specific book of the Bible. So I'll go to one that I know I love what it says about the word. That is John. So I can switch it from New Testament to just John. And then when I search, it will pull up scriptures just in John with the word word. So it says 22 times in 20 verses. First one was in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. So three times in that one verse, we see word. It's highlighted it for me. Okay, everybody with me? Let me know in the comments if you're with me. I want okay, to show okay, so let's back up because um, for us older folks, that's moving kind of fast. So okay. the first thing you did is um, you bring up Blue Letter Study Bible yep. by going to blueletterbible.org. Yeah. Right? And then you go to that, where is the window where you type your word in that you want to search? Great question. So at the top, it says search verses, phrases, and topics. And so then I can type in either a specific scripture, a word, or- On that white window that says verse or words. Yep, exactly. And that's where I can type in the verse or the word. So if I wanted to go back to the verse we were at, I could type John 1, and it will pull up the whole chapter, first chapter of John. If I want to search for the word word, I can put in just word, <laughs> Just the word. I didn't plan that. But I can put in just the word word and it will pull up throughout the scripture. OK, my search results. Um, they have an option here that I think is pretty cool where I can pull it up by book. So if well, I could, where did you how did you get to that? Um, just by scrolling down. So I put word in mm -hmm. and then there were search results. That's what is automatically on okay. other versions, which That's I'm not what I needed you to do is use that cursor to show where you're going. Yep. So, OK, I got yeah. it. This is yeah. great. So search results is what it's automatically on. That's mm -hmm. what it's automatically set for. I could click to see other versions, which is I'm not interested in. I'm a KJV only girl. And then if I click on by book, then it will pull up. And so that was right over there. If I pull up by book, I can find out how many times that word word is used in different books of the Bible. That's so, amazing. So already what fascinates me is you see it's used one time in Leviticus. Now I want to look through the scripture and see, okay, are there any books that don't use it at all? But this is one of the ways I can use this to study, okay? Now remember, in this search bar that Pastor Harris has helped us to highlight, I can put in a scripture. So if I want to go specifically, I know what I'm looking for. I want to go to John 1. I can type it there. I can type in a word. I can also type in multiple words, so a phrase. And it doesn't have to be an exact phrase. So if I want to find scriptures that say word and bread, okay, I can type in those two words. And down at the bottom, now it pulls up 14 times in verses where I see the words, the scriptures that say bread and word in them, okay, in no particular order, but they have those two words in it, okay? Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I, I've got one more question for you. And again, I don't want to slow you down too much. These but are great. 
course, oh, folks. So if we you click Word, if you type Word back in that search, because that's what we're searching right now, we yep. could have typed in faith or any word in the Bible. But if you put Word back in there again, where it says verse or words, yep. put Word, type Word so we can search for Word. Yep. And it's going to come up how many times? Sorry. And it comes up how many times? It says that it occurs 697 times in scripture. Okay. So show where that says that. Can you circle yeah, a little bit? Right there. Okay. So okay. now, but that will only pull up if it says word. Yeah. And it is W-O-R-D. But what if the word is W-O-R-D-S? Will that show up? In your search? Nope. So right here, it will not so, show up in my search, but I have an option to put an asterisk right there. And if I do, it will pull up not just word, but any word that starts with word and has a different ending. So if the Bible says words, wording, um, all of those will show up once I put an asterisk, the little star. So you all see, I added that to my search. So if I do press enter, and now this is word and all its variations shows up 1,247 times. Wow. So there's a lot more scriptures that show up once I put the asterisk. Okay, so, I have one last question then you can move on. But if we go back and we're searching again and you can do it up there where it says verse or words, that really stands out. Yep, you can but do it right there. there. So if you put in word, it was 697 times it found it. If you put in word with an asterisk, which would also get the endings like an S, yep, then like it's 1,200 and what? 47. 47. But what if you put an asterisk before and after word? Can you do that? I don't know. Let's try it. Yeah, you can do that. So it pulled up the same amount. It pulled up the same amount? Mm -hmm. So it must not pull up like by word. I think that's in scripture. Oh, so it wouldn't pull up sword like that, like in. Uh, no, nope. okay. I think with blue letter, you can only do the asterisk at the end. OK, so that answers the question I have, because in the um, in the ones I've used, you can do it either way. Yep. So with this one um, and I'll try it with just it on the front end instead of the back. But it looks like, yep, it's just you can only put the asterisk at the end. Okay, there, cool. There is one other search tool that I think is useful. So remember when we looked just for word, um, we can put in just one word. We can put in a chapter or a book and a verse. We can put in a couple words. So let's say I want to find things that talk about the word of God. I can just put in word and God. And any verse that has word and God in it anywhere will come up. Um, let's say, though, remember when we put in word, the first couple verses talked about the word of the Lord. If I want to search for an exact phrase, I can do that on here as well. We're starting slow. I know some of y'all are ready to get down to the Hebrew and the Greek and the Strong's and the letters. We're working our way to it. Okay, we're going to do this systematically. But um, not only can I search for a phrase in any order, if I want to search just for that phrase, word of the Lord, I can put a quotation mark. Okay, and if I put a quotation mark and then I put the word of the Lord, maybe I'll just put word of the Lord. Yeah, okay? that's right. If I put quotation mark around both sides, it's going to pull up. Well, let's search for it and see, okay? So one, it pulls up exact matches. So it shows me verses that specifically say, the, say word of the Lord, okay? And that's 258 times, is that what that says? Yes, it says 258 times in 255 verses, it has word of the Lord. Wow, that's amazing because this has nothing to do with the ninth class, but that's 129 plus 129. And 129 yep. is the nature of the Holy Ghost, and all scripture is given by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. So no that wonder it's 129 plus 129. And uh, Genesis 41, 32 says things are double because they're sure. So word yep. of the Lord is used the same amount of times as the Holy Ghost value times. Oh, wow. Okay. That nothing That's to do tight. With that. That's Go tight. Ahead. And in the last section, we'll get to pictographs and numbers, y'all. So we're starting with general. How do, I, how do I search? If I am doing a study, if someone says to teach on the word or fasting or things like that, we can just search like that. One thing I think is cool, though, so if I put it in quotes, it will pull up the exact phrase. If I delete the quotation marks and search, this is how it works. If I put it in, it still shows me the exact phrases, okay, with exactly what I put, word of the Lord. But then after those exact phrases, 
I get to the inexact phrases that include those words in different orders. Does that make sense? Wow. So without the quotation marks, it pulls up still the exact phrases. But then if I go down to the bottom, it will let me see the exact phrases, but also places, verses that use those words in different orders. OK, so let's stop there. That was our concordance section. So I'm just searching. I, I have a topic I want to learn about, whether it's the word, whether it's faith, whether it's repentance. I can search in scripture just like that. And I can pull up the verses just in English and find out what verses include this. I can classify them. I can search for different endings. And I want to do one more example of that really quick. Repentance was one of the words I just meant it, mentioned. And so I think that's a great one because I need to go look at the chat. So if I was studying repentance, right, I could just put repent. But what I'd probably want to do is put an asterisk at the end because then I'll get repented, repenting, repentance. So if I search for repent, Okay, now I'm going to have, sorry. I said repented. Yep. ED. Mm. yep. And so those variations will come up now. And so if I was studying repentance, this is where I could start. Just by looking at these verses and finding, okay, where is this used? And then I see first time it's used is Genesis 6 and 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. I can find the first time it's used. I could scroll all the way down and find. And at the bottom, I should make sure I point this out. And this is online. Um, on the app, it's a little different, but we can show that. But at the bottom, it says search results continued. And I can go, I can see this covers three pages because it only has so many per page. And if I go to that page, the last page, I can see the last time it's mentioned is Revelation 16, 11, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. That See, that by itself is interesting. The first time repentance is mentioned, it's God repenting. The last time it's mentioned, it's somebody who blasphemed God because of what they were going through and chose not to repent of their deeds. And then in Revelations, I see Revelations 3 up there. Yeah. You went a little bit further up. Um, so that's the, one of the seven churches there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, five out of seven had to repent, right? Yeah. And so so I, yeah, you could use this to just to become an expert in the subject of repentance. Yeah, and this is just from an English standpoint. So this is pulling up the verses and if with any of those verses, so like Pastor Harris mentioned the Revelations 3, let's go there. If I want to find out the context of that verse, I see just the verse here, but I can click on the verse number and it will take me to the chapter that includes that verse, but directly to that verse. So Revelations 3.19, if I want to see because we have, we have pronouns here, <laughs> as many as I love, I rebuke and chase and be zealous, therefore and repent. We don't know who is talking. We can take a guess, but we don't want to guess. We want to search for it. Who's talking, who they're talking to. And so if I go up a little bit in the chapter, once I go, I can see in context that this is written to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. And the one who's writing is the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, who is Jesus Christ. So with that said, that's where we start. I'm going to pause here. Let's go look at the comments. I'm going to see if there's any questions. Oh, I think I can do this right where I'm at. Okay. Yay. This is exciting. Okay. I'm looking at the comments and I'm seeing tight, tight, tight. I love what I see in the comments. I'm going to re read a few of them. I've used Blue Letter Bible for over 15 years. It's clear I haven't used it to its full capacity. This is awesome. Definitely learned something new. Yay. This is awesome. And so remember, it's available on your online for free. And then there's also an app on the phone that you can do basically everything with a few exceptions. So um, Pastor Harris, anything you want to add? Danny, anything I should say at this point? And then we'll move I, to the I think I think this is great so far because it tells our audience how to take a subject yep. and how to pull up every scripture in the Bible on that subject. Yep. And what you've told them is do you take a word and don't lock yourself into the exact spelling of the word because words have endings. Mm -hmm. Repent, repenteth, repented, repenting, repentance, repenteth. I think I already said two of them twice. But it would pull up all those words and they would be able to read in English. You've emphasized that a couple of times. All of the scriptures on repent in English. But yeah. then you have the ability to go to that next search level 
Yes. I know you do. I know it's in you yes. to take it to that next search level where you start to break it down into Hebrew and Greek. And even like I put up scripture, Matthew 27 and three, that maybe we'll pull up sometime in mm -hmm. uh, about repent because that's yeah. Judas repenting. And mm -hmm. his repentance was not what Peter's was. Absolutely. And was not what ours is required to be either, right? What's required. I love it. And yeah. we're, we have some great questions coming in and I want to address them because they fit into this first section. Right now, we're just using this as a concordance. We're searching, we're looking in English, we're finding where it's at, we're looking at the context. So I want to answer a couple of these questions. So one question says, how do you know who wrote that passage again? And so I don't want to go too far from Blue Letter Bible, but I want you all to know one of the best study tips I've ever learned is to keep reading. You might need to read, go back. You not, might need to go further below. But if you read the chapter we're talking about, and if it doesn't say in that chapter, the chapter before, if you see the word for or therefore, keep going back. But when you look in the context, you can see who's talking and who they're talking to. So that's the answer to that one. Next question, which is a great one. The question is, so Jesus's words aren't in red. So I so, didn't- So hold on, Tish, don't leave that point you just made. Okay. Because right now what you showed us is the ability to pull up all the individual verses with that word, let's say, for example, repent in it. Yeah. But you didn't show us that you can scroll from that verse to the verses above and below. Yeah. Well, and let's show that. Simple to us, but yeah. No, let's show it. So repent, if I go to- um, a verse. Okay. And so first time it's mentioned, let's just click on that one. So remember, I just put repent in, I put it in with an asterisk. And then if I click the verse, it's going to pull up the whole chapter. But if I scroll, just use my cursor and go up or use my cursor and go down, I can see the full chapter and I can see what was being discussed in that chapter. Okay. So right here, I can see Genesis six and six, it repented the Lord, but I can see the context of that. He, the Lord repented after verse five, when he saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Okay. But we can see that followed verse two, when the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And then I can go back up to verse one and see, it says, and it came to pass, which makes me know I should probably go back to the chapter before, but for time we won't. But so when I'm, well, in, if you click that second column, like this says Genesis six, one or Genesis six, two, or yeah. any of those, it just brings up that whole chapter. Yep. So exactly. So when I'm I, when I am in the search section, so I just went back a screen. So let's do it again the way we did it. So if I put in repent, and if I see this, and if I click on the verse right there, it will then go to the full chapter. So let's not use Genesis six because we used that. Let's go to a New Testament one because that's going to help my next point. So actually, let's go back. So remember, if I search for repent, either place. Well, let's go down here on word search. If I could click advanced options. I don't want to search the whole Bible right now. I want to search just the New Testament. So no, let's be more specific. I want to search just the Gospels because we already did New Testament. So if I go down here, these are Old Testament sections, historical books, prophets. Wait, you went down where? I don't see where you went. Yep. So I'm here where the green is moving. Okay. I, I clicked on advanced options. Okay. And that's going to help me pick up a predefined list. And then when I scroll down, I have first the whole Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. So the biggest classifications. Then I have some Old Testament groupings, and then I have some New Testament groupings, and then I can search a specific book. So I'm going to select the Gospels as my search, what, what part of the Bible I'm searching, and I'm searching for the word repent with an asterisk. Let's click go. Whoa, time is flying, y'all, so we're about to pick up the pace. But first time repent is used in the New Testament is Matthew 3 and 2. So this is a great example for the person who asked, how do I know who's speaking? It says in 3 and 2, and saying, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, who said that? Well, I need to just click the verse. You see, if I hover over it, it turns red. And if I click it, it now takes me. And I see in verse one, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness and saying, repent ye. So I can see who's saying it. Then there was a qu another question that I didn't answer yet about if you can see um, Jesus's writings in red. And Blue Letter Bible does have a feature to do that. So I made my screen a little bit wider because I can see some of those options at the top. So if I want to turn on Strong's, which is getting ahead of myself, but I will just show you while I'm here. If I select here, I can pull up a Strong's number by every word in that chapter. It just got real busy, though. So we're going to uncheck that. But that's an option. The other option 
is you can actually listen to the Bible. You can do that on the Bible and just too, for the record. But if you click red letter right there, then it will take things that um, in, will be in a written Bible as spoken by Jesus into red. So we can see in this chapter, there's only one thing that turned red. And that is what Jesus said in Matthew 3.15, which is when he insisted, though he was sinless on being baptized, what Jesus said in Matthew 3.15, when John told him, I need you to baptize me. Jesus's response was, suffer it to be so now. Let's do this for it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And so notice when I select red letter, it makes that red. But the default is all of the scripture. It's hard to see your cursor. Where did you select red I, letter? So, like I, my, I sent you a picture. My cursor is <laughs> 100, 200 <laughs> times the size of yours. I don't know how to do that, but I'll just move. I'll move more dramatically. Okay, so. Yeah, I'll scroll if you circle around. it or something. Yeah. Um, I don't know how to do that on the application we're using where I can write, but I will be more intentional. No, no, I, mean, I just meant if you like take it and do like that a little bit where yeah, we I'm with you. So there up you go. here yeah. where it says red letter, mm -hmm. that's what I'm selecting to okay, make. Cool. I didn't know you could do that. Right. Yep. And so if I click that there, then um I can see in the first time repentance is used is in Matthew three, verse two, first time it's used in the New Testament. I look in context back at verse one to see who was talking. But if I want to see something Jesus said and I want to use the red letter feature, I can select that. And then there are other things I can select up here. Like I mentioned, like I can select Strong's, which will pull up something we're about to talk about soon. Because I also saw a question in the comments about the numbers, things like that. So um, I see great engagement in the comments. We're going to keep going. Um, Pastor Harris, anything you want to say before we move to the next section on the interlinear and pulling it up in the original? No, I think language? we need to move forward. Okay, we're moving forward then. So we've seen how to use it as a concordance. We've seen how to search. The next level is when I am looking at a specific verse, um, we know that the Bible, when it was originally written, was primarily Old Testament and Hebrew, primarily New Testament and Greek. And so what we're looking at now is a translation and the King James Version, correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor Harris, is six, was translated into English in 1611. And so... Um, when we're reading it now in English, we might want to go back and there are benefits of going back to the original language to find out what word was used and how it was used. OK, I learned an example like that yesterday that blew my mind. We're in two verses if was from a different Greek word. And so in English, we're like, it's the same. Or if we're talking about love in the scripture, we think it's the same. And I'm actually going to use an example that we recently used in a blog on just word. So we'll use Hebrews 4 and 12 for that example right now. This is the one I use with my kids too. So in Hebrews 4 verse 12, it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Notice, let's rewind. Hey, Tish, hold on. Does that word quick mean as fast as Hussein Boat? Are you going to tell? It does not mean that, but we're going to show how we can look okay. that up. Okay. Right. But okay. before we go, I want to show for everybody so they're clear. How do I get to this verse? Okay. One, I can, like I said, it, like we said earlier, I don't just have to search for words. I can put in a specific verse if I know its address. So if I know it's Hebrews 4 and 12. If I type that in there, it takes me directly to that verse. I can use abbreviations. So I can just put in H-E-B 412, and it'll take me to that verse. If I just put in Hebrews 4, it will take me to the chapter, and I can scroll down to that verse. Okay? Yeah. That's how we get to that verse. Once we get there, now I don't just want it in English. Remember, this English is from 1611. So if I want to know what, the, what was meant when it was translated into English, I can either use an older Bible dictionary. And that's a tool we can talk about if we had time. The Merriam-Webster unabridged is the one we recommend. Um, but what we're going to do today is focus on just looking it up in the original language. So Hebrew. Hebrews is written in the New Testament. And so the New Testament was primarily written in Greek. So on Blue Letter Bible, if you notice, there are going to be two ways we can get to the Greek. OK, now you don't have to know Greek. There are going to be tools that help us to get into um, that verse so we can get there two ways. One, I'm moving my cursor big. One, I can just click on the verse number again. OK, that, that's the easiest way. If I click on the verse, 
what you're going to notice is underneath it, I now have, it says Textus Receptus, and I have the verse, this verse I see in English is written right here in Greek. That's one way to get there. I don't want to get to what's there though, so I'm going to click this X. If I'm going to close out of it, see the chapter, I click the X. Everybody see that? X, right there. I click the X, it yeah. closes out of interlinear. But the other way to get there is if I hover over tools, I didn't click anything, I just put my mouse over it, okay? But I also can press tools and it will open up the interlinear. Or you see if I hover over the tools, it's going to tell me a couple different types of tools that Blue Letter Bible has for every verse. We're not going to focus on all of these tonight. And some of these we will not recommend you focus on. But I want to tell you what they are. The first one is interlinear. That is what, we, what we're going to dig into where you see the verse in the original language. New Testament will, usually, will be Greek. Old Testament will primarily be Hebrew. They also have a tab called Bibles that shows it in other translations, which is helpful when you're comparing translations to see some of the verses are missing in other translations. And there's a reason we use the, use the King James Version, but that's there. Cross-references is where they pull up other verses that they, they think relate to this verse. We're not gonna spend much time on that. Commentaries are people's comments on the scripture, and I would not recommend spending time on those. It's basically, often a lot of people's opinions. And then they have Bible dictionaries, encyclopedias that give historical information um, or other contexts. And then miscellaneous is related maps or images or music. Okay, those are the tools. But the only one we're going to focus on tonight and the one I spend 99% of my time on Blue Letter Bible on is interlinear. Okay, let's pause there. Pastor Harris, anything I should say right here? Anything you want to no, say? I think you're saying it, that the key is for us to go, if we're taking a deeper dive, yep. if we're working on getting understanding, which the word understanding, bain in Hebrew means between and between. It means you break it down and break it down and break it down. If the goal is to get more understanding and break it down, where you're going now with it after they got the verse, Hebrews 4 and 12, they click on the tools, and yep. then the very top one is the interlinear, and that's where I think you're about to take us. Absolutely, and I see some questions about the doing it on the app. If we have time, I'll show you all tonight, but if not, I could do a separate video that walks you through this on the app, okay, on, a, on the devices. It's similar, though, okay, similar setups. So with that said, um, now we're on interlinear, okay? And the default for interlinear is it's something called reverse. And I'm just going to walk through these options real quick. So this verse, remember, we're not going to study the whole verse. There's a lot there. Y'all, you could study all day. You got to work, though. But what the Bible says is that for the word of God is quick. So on reverse, it shows you a listing, okay? A vertical listing. Is that right? Yeah, vertical listing that shows first column says English KJV. Has a question mark there. Um, okay, I'm not going to click on that for now. But it lists the words for the word of God is quick. So it's listing them in the order of the English scripture in that first column. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper. And I can keep scrolling down. That's the first column. Okay. Second column. And we're going to show you a different way to look at it. But I want you all to be clear on what each one is because it's really just two ways. The second column says something called Strong's. And so this is referencing James Strong who took the Hebrew words and the Greek words, put them that are used in the Bible, the primary root words. He took them and put them in alphabetical order and assigned a number to each of them, okay? We'll talk more about Strong's in a second. But basically, it's an identifier, a number that identifies which Greek word in the New Testament or Hebrew word we're talking about. So four is going to be our example. <laughs> so four has the Strong's number, G. 1063. So when there was the long list of all the Greek words, number 1063 was the Greek word gar. Okay. So in here we see the English, which is four. And something cool just happened. I want to show you. Do y'all see how four, the, the row is highlighted yellow at the top? And it's hard to see it. And if I move, it's going to change it. But can you all see right here. Oh, I guess it does it backwards. You guys see when I put the cursor over there, how that turns yellow? Mm -hmm. When I go down here, it's yellow too. And it's highlighting where I find that word in the verse. So four is highlighted now. If I go to the, I wish I could, I wish I was here so I could point at my screen. But yeah, you guys, see it. So if you go to the next one, Logos, yeah. 
now each word is highlighting the word as I go so I can find it at the top. Okay, so we have the English word, we have the Strong's number, and remember G is going to be for Greek. So this is Greek word number 1063, and the word is gar. It's written up here in Greek letters, and underneath it, it's something called the transliteration that just writes it in English letters. Then they have a thing where you can pronounce the word. So if I press that, it'll show me how to pronounce that. I said gar just reading, but there might be a different pronunciation. I don't know if I press play if they can hear that. They can? Okay. So I'm going to press play. <laughs> Maybe I can hear it. No, we didn't hear it. Okay. So when you're on a computer, click that and you'll be able to hear that. Okay. And then last but one. Fish, a note on that. Again, yep. that is not pronouncing for you necessarily the the actual use of that word in that scripture. You're getting ahead of me. Oh, okay. Well, okay. But Go that's a good point. You can keep going. No, you got it. Okay. So I will speed up. So we'll get to where Pastor Harris is. And so reverse just shows the verse in the order of the English with the Strong's number, the Greek words, the Strong's Greek's words. And I'll, I'll explain that differentiation in a second and the uh, part of speech. Forward does the same thing, but the difference is it puts it in the order of the verse in Greek. So let's rewind. Reverse gives it in the order of the English word. So if you notice, it's based on this first column, which is the verse in English. If I click forward, it lists it in the order of the Greek words. So notice when I scroll, the yellow part at the top is just going in order. So it's the exact same thing, just in a different order. This is the way Blue Letter Bible has been for all the time I've used it until about a year ago, where they added a new way to look at the verse in Greek that I think is so incredibly useful and exciting. So that's what we're going to focus on tonight. But I wanted it because when you all go there, it's going to automatically go to this. I wanted you all to know what that is. But now let's go to what I use every time I'm looking at an interlinear verse and what will look similar to what Pastor Harris uses on PC Study Bible when you watch a Just Word class, okay? I hope y'all are with me. Actually, let's look at the comments to make sure I can. Okay, cool. Now, amen that, Tish. Every time I use blue letter, I use the forward inline, the one that you're at right now. Yep, this is, this is the one I definitely recommend. And so I'll show you all two ways. So remember, reverse was in the order of English, okay? Forward was in the order of the Greek. Now, when I go to forward in line, it's still in the order of the Greek, but it's just presented in a different way, an easier to read way, in my opinion. If I go to reverse in line, again, it's reverse. It's in the English order for the word of God is. But what we're going to focus on is the forward in line. So if you're starring one, if there was a quiz, which one would we recommend for interlinear? Forward in line. Okay, so with that, let me make sure we're clear. I'm clear on that. So forward in line is given the top line is English, but the second line is how it was written uh, in the original text. Yep. And so the English word above that word quick is above the first word in that verse in Greek in the original text. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay, so forward in line is where we want to go. And so what we see is at the top row, just like Pastor Harris said, first word is quick, which is great because that's going to be the word we focused on. But I first want to just explain this interlinear for the whole verse before we get to a specific word. Okay, so remember, let's let's recap. I got to Hebrews 4 and 12. Okay, because I want to understand this verse. I click on the verse number or tools and I go to interlinear. It pulls it up in Greek. And it defaults to reverse. But Letitia and Pastor Harris said go to forward inline. So just take our word for it and go that one. Okay. So once I get to forward inline, now let's talk about what we have here. Okay. And Pastor Harris, if you want to explain, you want to explain the pieces here? Go ahead. Okay. So the top row, so you can see, first of all, when you look at the verse overall, you can see the different words. Okay. We can see this word was not translated into the English. Pastor Harris can explain that better than I can. And then we can also see some words that were combined, okay? But long story short, I see the verse. There's some different colors, different words. We'll go through what we get for each verse, each word, okay? Before the words, the way this interlinear works, the top row is 
English. We know this. English, we see quick for the word. Why is it out of order? Because it's not going in the order of the English. It's going in the order of the original Greek, okay? So I see first the word quick up here. That's the English. Next row, I see the Greek in the from the original verse, okay? I see the Greek from the original verse. That's going to be important because when you look at this row, you're actually going to see two different Greek words, okay? This is important. We're going to see two different Greek words. So I see English, quick. I see the way the word was spelled in that verse with these three Greek letters. I will say we have a, yep, I, we, will, we will show you later, but in our library, we have all the Greek letters, all the Hebrew letters, um, and we have charts that identify, but let's stay here. So we see the Greek word, then we see the transliteration, which is if I can't read those Greek letters, because- They don't make it new, but go ahead. Good job, Pastor Harris. I, so I'm if there. I can identify the letters, that's great, but outside of Pastor Harris, most of us don't know how to read those letters together. So they give me what's called a transliteration where it's written out mm -hmm. how to read those Greek letters that I probably don't know, okay? Next up, we have the Strong's number. Remember, James Strong's put the primary root words into order alphabetically and then gave them a number, okay? That's the number. So this word, quick in English, is from this Greek word, zon. I, I might be hopefully pronouncing that correctly, but I'm signing it out based off of the transliteration. Then I've got a Strong's number, but then I've got more Greek letters. And this is why, okay? Because this word right here, those three letters, that is the way this word is spelled in this verse. Strong's spells this word with these three letters, which are similar, but they're different, okay? And then at the bottom row, we have the transliteration, which is how you write the strong spelling. So the question, let's pause there. Pastor Harris, would you like to say anything? Uh, if you want me to, but you go ahead. Okay. Let me know when. So all I want to say here is that what's cool about this is at the bottom, these three ones I'm highlighting, it gives me strongs. Strongs is a concordance and a dictionary, okay? And so in a concordance and in a dictionary, you can't necessarily list every spelling of every single word, right? Because if you do, your dictionary will be 10 times longer than it is and will be, you know, a dictionary doesn't list every spelling. So what Strong's gives you is a root word, a uh, common spelling, but there might be variation in how it's spelled in a verse. So I'll give you guys examples from this verse. You see at the bottom? This is Strong's for quick, but you notice in the verse, it's spelled a little bit differently, but it's from that core root word. If I look at the next word, gar, at the top, remember those top two rows are giving me, top rows English, row two and three is giving me how it's spelled in that verse. You guys see how it's spelled? Okay. Then I look at the bottom and it's giving me strong spelling of it. In this one, strong's is exactly the same as in the verse. Y'all see that? If I go to the word word in this verse, We've got logos at the top in that verse. Strong's also has logos. But then I get to God, okay? At the top of God is Theo. Hopefully I pronounced that right. That's the spelling in that verse. But Strong's has Theos. And so there is a difference in how a word is spelled in a verse and in Strong's. But Strong's is giving you the dictionary entry with the root or core of that word. So often people will be referencing Strong's, but sometimes Pastor Harris might say, this is how this word is spelled in this verse. And that is referring to the top half of that, okay? So I'm gonna pause there. I'm gonna check the comments for questions and I'm gonna pass it to Pastor Harris and then we'll, we'll pick okay, that up. Okay, so just, uh, I'll add one more note to what you just said. So for example, if uh, Strong's was English words, Strong's, I might say, Tish, I heard what you said. Mm -hmm. And then we use Strong's to break down that sentence. Instead of Strong's having heard, mm -hmm. he would just have the word hear. And then the definition of the word hear. Yep. Um, if I said I'm hearing what you said, Strong's would still have the word hear. 
and it would be the exact same number, whether I said hear, heareth, hearing, whatever, Strong's would say hear yes. is the word because it is a dictionary. And in a dictionary, you don't have to conj con conjugate everything, yes. right? You don't have to have the ing and the ed and the s and all that. That's given. Yeah, that's given. And so that's why uh, strong sometimes, many times, does not have the word spelled exactly like it was spelled in the original Greek text for the New Testament, Textus Receptus, yep. or in the Masoretic Hebrew text for the Old Testament. Yeah, strong can be a different spelling, but in most cases. It's the right root word and yep. the right definition. Is that okay. good? Yep, okay. that's great. Time is racing. I see in the comments, I, I think every the hour has gone so fast, but we're going to try to wrap up the last section really quickly, okay? But can you all let me know in the comments, is this making sense? Is this helping you? And if you're going to give us 10 more minutes, okay? So I'm going to watch the comments just for a second. This is where the waiting music is playing. But somebody tell me, is this making sense? Do y'all have questions? Um, and 10 more minutes, all right? Let me know. I am watching the comments. I say, why don't you take, this is so good that you <laughs> ought to at least take 10 more minutes. And I think this should go more than that because again, all I get and get understanding. Understanding. Yeah. Well, the boss has said, <laughs> okay, so we're going to keep going. This is great. Thank you all for your feedback. I love seeing the comments and I'm glad you all are learning and it's making sense. That's the goal. I want to give you all, we want to give you all the tools because you know, we are just word. That is our goal to help each of us grow in the word of God. And we do have a major announcement, so I can't go too long because I can't have y'all leave me. So let's go ahead. Okay. And yes, stay afloat. We're going to keep everybody with us and we love questions and we will keep the posting up so you can watch it again okay because i know we're covering a lot and so we're going to stick with the main parts okay so let's go ahead and so with these verses long story short you all have seen there is the english word there is the spelling in that verse and then there's the, the root word what will be in the dictionary i love the example pastor harris gave a dictionary is not going to have all of the variations of here it'll just have the main part but in a a sentence, you might change the structure a little bit. And so that's what that is, okay? So we can see, especially in forward in line, that's the view we would recommend. You can see it like this. <clears throat> now, I didn't mention the last row of this. At the bottom, it gives me the part of speech and other parts about that word, about the tense, things like that. So on quick, we can see that this word quick is a verb, which already grabs your attention because when we think quick in English, we think adjective or adverb. But in this verse, when it says the word of God is quick, it is a verb. And so I can see when I click at the bottom or just hover over it, I can see it's a verb in the present tense. It's active, participle, nominative, singular, and masculine. We are not going to go through all of those now. But what you can see is on the side, you'll notice once I clicked that, over here on the side, it gives me more information about that, which is so cool. So I can see what we talked about. Inflected was the spelling in that verse. I can see the root over here. I can see the Strong's number. I can see the English. So what I've been talking about, it just lists like that. I can see the code for the things about that verse, V, P, A, P, N, S, M. And I can see what each of those stands for, verb, present, active, et cetera, et cetera. But what I like is, in addition to be able to see that it's a verb, I can click for part of speech, I can click verb, and it's going to explain a word or phrase denoting an action. In the Greek language, the verb usually communicates five pieces of information. So it gives me a little synopsis of those. Let's say I'm saying, well, what does uh, singular mean? I can click on number and I see it denotes one person or thing. I click voice for active, et cetera, et cetera. We're not going through all of these, but I want you all to see the tool is there, okay? And each of the things I've showed so far, you can do them on the app on the phone. So with that and said, all of this, Tish, all of this is under that interlinear that they clicked, right? Yep, all and of this is under each interlinear. Each of these you're naming, there are some great examples, particularly like that nominative in the yep. singular. Yep. Like in Matthew 28, 19, if somebody was debating about whether you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, 
Uh, so you could go to that forward in line and yep. it says in the name. name. Yeah. And you just click that and now it's going to pull up the yep, app right there and it's going to say the name is. It's singular. Singular. Absolutely. And, and you click singular, it's going to say. Denoting one person or thing. So right there, it <laughs> says you baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And it says that's singular. That's denoting one yep. person or thing. Exactly. But yep. if then they, but, but let's get, stay with me for just a second. But if then they went to Matthew 10, verse 2, if they went to Matthew 10, verse 2, hint, hint. And then they clicked that forward in line and they said, he was given the names. He said the names of the apostles are these. And you click that. Yep. And now over the side it says plural, yep. which means what? Denoting two or more. And so he said the names of the apostles, it says that's denoting two or more. But he said the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost right there yep. says that means it's only one person or one thing. Mm -hmm. Ain't that tight? Very tight. We could do that same thing. Last comment for right now. In Matthew 1, it uses three different spellings for the name of Jesus in the mm -hmm. original text. Absolutely. And they could study the name of Jesus and the spelling of Jesus. Why is it accusative, genitive, or nominative? Right? Absolutely. So that's a little bit further down the line. Yep, it is a little further down the line, but it's a great point. And I think the scripture you brought us to is another one that shows the benefit of being able to see how it's spelled in a verse versus in Strong's. Mm -hmm. From Matthew 10 and 2, when it lists the name of the names of the 12 apostles, you see it says names at the top. And oh, we had a question about how you access that Greek parsing. You just click on the colored, um, whatever color it is that has the letters at the bottom with the code. So you see the nouns are in orange throughout the mm -hmm. scripture. In for apostles is noun. Simon is noun. Names is noun. But if I click on that button at the bottom, it pulls that up on the side. And I can see the green are verbs throughout the verse. And so if I click on the little letters at the bottom, it'll pull up the parsing. But what I want to point out since we're here is you guys notice in this verse, right, we have names in English. The next two rows show me how it's spelled in that verse. Onamata which in Born of Water, which you should get, um, we talk about the difference in onamata. Ta is what makes that Greek word plural versus onama, which is one name. And so if I look this up in Strong's, it's gonna say onama, which is right. It's talking about a name, it's the root word. But in this verse, it's plural. And that's why it's spelled onamata. And when I click on NNPN right here, it's gonna tell me that in this verse, it's plural, okay? That makes sense to everybody. I want to show you all one more example that I think is helpful like this, because not only can you see if it's noun, if it's verb, but like in Romans 10 and 9, which is relevant, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And so some people will take the scripture and say, if I confess and I believe, I am saved. But in this verse, if I click on the verse number, it takes me to interlinear. The default is reverse. But if I click forward in line, right, and go to thou shalt confess, what I want is where it says I'll be saved. Am I saved now? Or sh let's look. So when I go to that verse, I see thou shalt be saved in English. I see at the top how it's spelled in that verse. I see at the bottom the Strong's number, the root word, the dictionary spelling. But if I click the green button there, because it's green because it's a verb, you don't have to remember the colors. If I just click the button, though, with the code, it'll pull up the Greek parsing. And I see this is all of those things we talked about. And it's a verb. But the tense is in the future. It doesn't say you are saved in the present. But it says in the future, if you continue down this path, in the future, you shall be saved. Which is why Titus 3 and 5 says, not by works of righteousness, which, he's, which we've done, but by his mercy, he saved us. So if I went to 1 Peter 3, 21, it says baptism does also now save us. And you know, okay, you guys see but where the I'm confession, going. he says your salvation will come in the future. In the future, yeah. Okay, and so we, you can dig into this with the indicative. So we had four sections we were going to hit tonight. We are done with the first two. So let's go to the third briefly, and then we'll finish, We'll be done for tonight, okay? So the first one, we can use this as a concordance. I can just search for a word, okay? 
Number two, I can use this with the interlinear. And that's what we're looking at now. I can see the verse. I can see the verse overall. I can see the English. I can see the spelling in that verse. I can see the dictionary spelling, the root word, Strong's, which has a number assigned to it, H. And we haven't looked at too much Hebrew yet, but H would be for Hebrew word. G would be for a, a, a Greek word. And then, so if I want to go beyond the interlinear, the last section we'll go to tonight is definitions. Well, how do I know what these words mean? So we'll go back to Hebrews 4 and 12, where the, it says the word of God is quick. How do I get back to Hebrews 4 and 12? I can just search at the top. But if I know it's something about a scripture that says word and quick, I can just put in word and quick, and I'll find that's only in one verse in the Bible. Okay? So I can click on the verse. I just hover over where it's at, click it, and now... You all know what to do. We're going to interlinear. We're going to find this verse in its original language. It you got to break it down. We started on the reverse because that's the default for the system. But if I click to forward in line, it gives me an easier way to look at it. So now, quick. Remember, quick was a verb. And it says the word of God is quick. And many people, if you go to Google, this is why we don't go to Google. The Bible was translated to English in 1611, y'all. Meanings of words change over time. So if I say something is quick now, y'all could tell me in the comments, quick means fast. That's tight. Yeah, that's a great example. Pastor Harris says all the time things are tight. And if something was tight in 1611, y'all, it's what Pastor Harris just showed you. That's right? bad. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, right that's there. bad. That's a bad horse. If they said that in the Bible days, that means it's not positive. Now that's good. So I can't depend on modern definitions to define biblical words because the Bible was translated more than 400 years ago. So I can go back to an old English definition or I can go to the original Hebrew or Greek. So with that said, y'all, we can do this all night. This is so great, but we got to close. So we're going to close with definitions. But is this making sense? I know it's making sense because y'all comments are helping me. So with that said, quick, how do I know what this means? I know how it's spelled in that verse. But if I click on one thing, so let, wait, let's go over this real quick. So I can hover over these and I see different things. But if I click on the G2198, because remember, Strong's is a concordance. It gives me a number to identify which word, but it's also a dictionary. And dictionaries we now have definitions. So if I click on for each verse where there's a, each word where there's a Strong's number, I can click on that and it's going to open it up. Okay. So before I get to quick, no, let's just go to quick for time. If I had time, I'd go to Word first, but we don't. Or I'd go to Powerful. But for time, let's go to Quick. So you see I'm on this verse. I can click G2198. It's going to open a separate window that's all about that word. I got another option that I want to show you all. If I'm on Reverse, which is what it's automatically on, it's the same thing, okay? I would just scroll down this way to Quick, click G2198, and it opens a window, okay? Now, we're going to explain this window briefly. Um, you all are making me want to do a part two, <laughs> but for now, let's just look at this word. So this word that is translated into English is quick. At the top, it says Strong's G1298. Remember, a Strong's number identifies where it is in that dictionary. It's dictionary entry in the Greek dictionary for Strong's number 2198. That's right there. That's then it an has alphabetical listing, right? Yep, it's an alphabetical listing, exactly. And so then I have the transliteration, which is just writing these letters in a way we can read it. So right here are the Greek letters in this verse. This is relevant if, if we ever talk about how a word is spelled in a verse, if we ever talk about the number of a word. We're taking letters, if it's Strong's or from the original verse, we're adding those up, okay? But there are the letters which we have a Greek letters chart and a Hebrew pictograph chart. We can put those in the comments so you can identify those letters. But transliteration, that's the pronunciation we saw before. I'm sorry. That is the writing of the Greek letters or the Hebrew letters in a way we can read it, okay? Then they have pronunciation. They write it out just like most dictionaries do, and they have a sound button where you can play it. They have part of speech, so we can see this word in the dictionary is a verb. And then we can also see something called a root word. So if this word comes from another word, it will identify it here. Right here, this word is a primary verb. So they're not identifying any root word, okay? But that is something with some words we can do, okay? For time, we won't go through all of these pieces, 
but there are some other dictionaries here. The place I like to look above all is right here. This is the KJV translation count, which tells me the ways that this word was translated in the Bible. So we're talking about dictionary uh, entry, and I, I don't want to mispronounce it, so I'm going to play it. It's, some of you all said you could hear it, some of you can't, so I'm going to play it, and then I'll tell you what they say if you can't hear it. Zao. Okay, so it says we pronounce this word Zao. I will tell you real quick because it just came to mind. Let's say you want to go play it yourself because right now you can't. All you have to do is take this Strong's number. You see it? G2198. If I type this, you remember how I could search for a word or a verse? If I type G2198 in there, it will pull up this word. Or let's say, I know Pastor Eric wanted to talk about this. If I say, well, what's the first Hebrew word in alphabetical order? I could put H for Hebrew and the number one. And what does it pull up? <gasps> the Hebrew word ab. Pastor Harris, would you like to talk about this? I know you mentioned this. So no, 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 that's right. Because um, again, their first letter is Aleph, which became our letter A. Their second letter is their letter Bet which became our letter B, mm -hmm. and they don't make let words out of one letter. And yeah. so the first word that you can spell with those 22 Hebrew letters is the, le is the word A-B, which is the word Ab, which is our word father, Yeah, right? Yeah. And it makes sense that in the whole Bible, if you arrange all the original words, Hebrew and Greek, or Hebrew, all the Hebrew words in their alphabetic order, and then once you got them organized, hey, for example, uh, my name is Tim. Yes. Your name is Letitia. Letitia. And then in the room with you, you have who? Danielle. So if we was arran arranging those three words at just word, who would be number one? JW1 would be Danielle. So Danielle's one. Who's number two? JW2 would be Letitia. And who's number three? JW3 would be Pastor Tim Harris. Yeah, I'm in back the bus. But Danielle's one, Tisha's two, I'm three. Why? Because we just took our uh, names, put them in alphabetical order, and then put a number by them so we could keep going back there. That's all Strong's did. Oh, and so the very first word in Hebrew is the word ab that you can spell. And so they put the number one by ab, right? Yep. Absolutely. And so since we're on a Hebrew word, let's go to this one to show those parts. And then we'll go back to the Greek one. And then we're closing. And we have a very important announcement. So please don't leave, y'all. Like this announcement will make your whole year better. I promise. So just give me like five more minutes and we'll finish this definition section, okay? So what we see on this word is ab, okay? We see a Strong's H1. H is for Hebrew class. One is because it's first in alphabetical order of the Hebrew words. Then we've got the letters. We've got the transliteration, how to pronounce those letters. If I can't read those, I don't have to. Go to the transliteration and go to the pronunciation and I can press the play button to hear it. I see it's a noun. Father is a masculine noun. I can see that it's a root word. So I there are other words that go back to father, but father doesn't have a root word, okay? But the part I was showing you on the Greek that I love that you can also see on a Hebrew is it will tell me how else is this Strong's number translated in our Bible. And so we can see according to Blue Letter Bible, this word ab is translated in the Bible more than a thousand times as father. So often in the Old Testament, when you see father, it'll be ab. But now you all know how to look in a specific verse and say, is this word ab or is it something different? Isn't that exciting? You can also see, though, that this word is translated chief, families, desire, patrimony, prince, principle. We can't go all through all of those through all of those for time. But if I click on any of them, it will take me to verses that have that word in it. So let's use prints because there's only one. So if I click on that, it's going to pull up. Oh, so this is a great learning moment. It's going to pull up multiple verses that have the word prints and H1, but it will put H1 by which of those words is from ab. So you see in Numbers 116, it has the word princes, but princes is an H1, fathers is. And that's why fathers has an H1 by it. Ab. So, mm -hmm. yep. 
And so then we see princes. Is H1 by it? Nope. It's fathers that's from Ab. Okay, so if we, we'd have to search these verses. And if we were in class, I'd see who could find it first. There it is, Joshua twenty two fourteen. There were 10 princes of each house, a prince, H1. So in that verse, prince is tied to Strong's number one. And then in that same verse, it has fathers. So you should be able to click on that, huh? And pull up the interlinear and let's Yes. Confirm. Okay. See, this is what we do with more time. But since Pastor Eric said we're going either way. So Joshua 22, 14, I can click on that verse. And you see it puts it on reverse, but we're going to switch to forward in line. First time princess is used, remember it wasn't ab at first. It's this word, nasi, nasim, which we could look at, but let's keep going. Next time throughout all a prince. And in this verse, right here, <gasps> prince is Av. Okay. And then if we keep going, fathers is, oh, this is a great example. So we see in this verse of fathers is we have a longer spelling, but it goes back to the root, Av, which is father. And even in the longer spelling, you can see the first two letters are Av. Okay. So for time, that all makes sense to everybody? So last one, we'll close here. We've identified what Strong's is, Hebrew and Greek. So when I look at a word, I can see transliteration, all those pieces I've shown. You can also see how it's translated. So I went, let's rewind. I went back to the word we were looking at for the word of God is quick. And so with quick, remember it was Strong's G2198. I could go back to Hebrews 4 and 12 to get there. Or if I'm just on Blue Letter Bible, I can just search in the search bar for G2198. Two, one, nine, eight, and voila, I'm back at Zao. The word of God is quick, Zao. So what does Zao mean? What does quick mean? Well, in our Bible, Zao is translated live, be alive, alive, quick and lively. So I would guess, based off of the way it's used in scripture, that quick relates to the word of God being alive, Okay. Now we have a couple other ways that it's defined. So remember, there were other dictionaries up here, like Vine's Expository Dictionary. They have an outline of biblical usage. But what we'll go to for time is, and there's another one down here. So there's multiple dictionaries on this page for that word. But we're going to look at Strong's definition. He's the one who assigned the numbers. And so he put the same word. You see the same three Greek letters we saw. We see zao, the transliteration. We see zao, the pronunciation. We see, according to Strong's, it's a primary primary verb. And Strong's defines this word as to live. And so then if I scroll down, last thing I'll show you is at the bottom, I can find other verses that use zao or form of zao. So in Matthew 4 and 4, man shall not live by bread alone, zao. Okay. My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her and she shall live, zao. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, Zao. And if I scroll all the way down to the book of Hebrews, and it goes in biblical order, if I go to Hebrews, so this is on the second page, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Wouldn't that be terrible if I passed it? Nope, there it is. For the word of God is quick. This word Zao is lifetime. It's living. It's liveth. It's liveth. But in Hebrews 4 and 12, in English, it's quick. But that word means living. Okay? That all makes sense. Yeah, you're going to the, you're doing the same thing and you're just digging into it yeah. and getting more of an understanding. And Absolutely. what you've done is great to be able to do um, to do just that. So you're some six minutes away from 930, I oh, think. Yeah, we're going to stop. I know y'all are with me. I love the comments. This is so exciting. Our goal well, I meant you ought to just we ought to just go six more minutes. I, mean, <laughs> well, I think in the last six minutes, we should probably make that year-changing announcement. What do you think? I think that tonight you're on a roll. And I know you got back up in there, so it doesn't matter what I think, that I would be outvoted two to one. Well, JW1 so, and JW2, we're going to make our vote. And JW3, you can vote as well. <laughs> well, why don't y'all go ahead and then JW3 uh, will close out. Okay. Um, so Blue Letter Bible, this tutorial, it sounds like you all want a part two. And I think that would totally be great. Some of the things we did not get to hit, 
Uh, we talked about the Bible being, you can use Blue Letter Bible as a concordance. So just searching in English, you can look at it, the interlinear, the verse in Hebrew or Greek. You can look at the definitions of specific words. What we didn't get to deal with as much are root words, pictographs, numbers, um, and some of the other pieces. But are you all ready for the year changing announcement? <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to try to do this. It's do justice. Okay, are we ready, Danny? Okay, so we're very excited to share with you all some extremely exciting news, okay? Just Word Ministries will be five years old this May, and um, this year um, we are going to do something very exciting. And um, I don't even know how to go about this, Danny. I'm so excited. I have a lot of emotions, but excitement is at the top. So what I would like to tell you all is this year. Danny, how do I do this? Do I tell them I should mute myself? Thank you all for your patience for our private conversation. So the first announcement I would like for you all to know is this year, we are bringing back, drum roll please, Danny. This year, we are bringing back Monday night webinars. Some of you all know back in 2018, 2019, we were doing weekly classes on important Bible topics. And so this year we are bringing back Monday night webinars. Are you all excited? We're going to be doing this time every week. The first Monday of the month, it will be for pastors only. So we will not be live on Facebook and YouTube those nights. But every other Monday this year, our plan is to do Monday night webinars. So that's that's level one announcement. But level two is the topic we are going to be covering, okay? And the topic we're covering with a whole new study book, that goes with it. Are you all ready? The topic for the year, because, oh, wait, wait, let me pause before we get to the drum roll. The topic for the year is not just like in the past, we might have covered a topic for a couple weeks. We have a topic for the year, okay? And, oh, let me say that this topic for the year is tied to an online course that you can be certified in, okay? This topic for the year has a two-part book, the first part of which is 165 pages. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna tell you all because it's so exciting that I've been like in tears with excitement. Look, Y'all look at Pastor Harris's face, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so the topic for the year, are you all ready? We're back on Mondays, okay? We've got a new 165 page book. It goes with an online course that you can be certified in. And the topic for this year is the foundation. And the theme of it for the year is the requirements. We are going to make sure that everybody we're attached to and everybody you're attached to can become an expert in the principles of the doctrine. Isn't this exciting? Are y'all excited? We are launching a new study with certification called The Requirements, the foundation mastery course for all Christians. The way this is going to go is this year, we are going to help everybody know what every Christian should know. When you look at Strong's or look at a concordance, guys, there are hundreds of topics in the Bible. But do you know how many of them God called the principles, the first principles, the foundation the church is built upon? It is Jesus Christ, but it consists of six principles listed in Hebrews chapter six. And so this year, we're going through the principles. Every, oh, so I got questions. Every month, 
we will go through one principle at great length. Every month, there will be live classes on Mondays. In the book, you have full outlines tied to each class, okay? Um, guys, it's going to be fire. Like, it's going to be so amazing. We're going to walk through the principles of the doctrine. Do you all know what they are? Number one, repentance from dead works. That's March. We're going to go through number two, faith toward God. That's April. We're going to go through principle number three, the doctrine of baptisms. And so in May, we'll do water baptism. And in June, we'll do spirit baptism. July, we'll take a break so you can review, make sure you got it because this is the requirement. You need all six. And then we'll pick back up in August with the rest of the principles. Guys, it's going to be amazing. The books, Danny, can you throw the book back up there? The book is 165 pages and it's just for the first three principles. It has key terms, key points. Should I share the book? Should we? Sh I should share my screen so you all can see the book. Oh, just click on the link. Okay, let's click on the link, guys. Are y'all ready for it? So the book, how do you get the book? Okay, because this book will be your study guide for the year. The book, I'm sorry, this is going to be in two parts. So far, part one will take you through the summer. Okay, part two, you'll get over the summer for the rest of the part of the year. But it is the requirements, the foundation, mastery course for all Christians. Okay, and so when you go to the book, you can see what it looks like. You can see what's included. There are Bible lessons on every principle of the doctrine. There are video lessons, key points and key terms. Each one includes outlines, a bonus section, study activities, and free certification on just word. So it goes through the principles of the doctrine. Book one includes principles one, two, and three. Okay. Um, and then for each class, each week, there's a class. You'll watch the class on Monday or when you're available throughout the week. And then you'll have outline to study activities to study, and an assessment that you can take online. The assessment's optional, but doesn't everybody want to be Just Word certified in the foundation? Okay, so here is the, I'll show you just a little bit of the table of contents. We'll start off on next Monday, February 27th, with first, the foundation. So order your book today because you want to have it for next week. Um, we'll go through repentance. We'll go through what is repentance, repentance in action, and about everybody coming to repentance and how they get there. Um, I won't go through all the table of contents, but I'll show you what the sections look like. So repentance from dead works, you'll see there are three classes um, and you'll see with each class, you'll be able to go to the class. You can see what the key points are. You can get the key terms for that class. And there is a full outline that goes with the class. You have places to take your notes built into the book. So you'll basically have a study reference sheet that you can always go back to, to make sure your principles are good. And you can get what's great is, you can get certified in this through just word. We're making it so that you can get certified so you can be what Hebrews 5 said. It says there comes a time where you ought to be a teacher. So we're setting this up so you take it and then you can teach it at your church or with anybody else you want. I'm going to stop there. Danny? We have a question next week. Oh. Another one. We do? For the next few days. Oh, we do have a special announcement. for let. Okay, last yeah, thing. So for those who stuck with us and for those who do, what I want you all to know is the workbook, um, we, we always do study plan workbooks and they're only $15. But if you order by the end of the day on Wednesday, by midnight on Wednesday, the workbook is only $10. And this is a workbook with full outlines for the first three principles, all of the classes, notes, order by Wednesday at midnight. And you can get it for $10 with the Getting Started Packet, which includes a checklist of the classes, a bookmark with a references for the principles of the doctrine. Go order right now. Blow up my email with your orders for your workbooks. It's going to be a great year. And what's exciting is we're going to make sure our foundation is sure. That is the goal that we are building on the principles of the doctrine. So we're going to give resources this year to do that. Um, Pastor Harris, would you like to say anything? Um, I think you've said a lot. We're done. You're done? I think so. Danny, are we done? Okay. The link has been released. We'll post it, email it everywhere, but order by Wednesday at midnight. And if you say, if you're over a ministry or a church and you say, I want my ministry to do it live with Just Word this year, you can do that. And we can 
they can we can work with your church to get them in bulk. And if you want to make sure the ministers at your church, if you want to make sure your household has a strong foundation, get one for everybody in your family. We do bulk pricing, but we want to help you make sure your foundation is sure. I've I, been holding on to this excitement and to this yeah, announcement. I think this is I think this is um, uh, a most important study uh, in the life of every Christian. And um, and if they want to grow in God, that's you have to have it. It's not optional. It's you a required. Have to build up on the right foundation, and the uh, foundation has been under attack. Um, and the danger of that again is in Hebrews six, verse four through six, that if you fall away, it's impossible to renew them under the repentance, seeing they crucified the Son of God afresh bring it to an open shame, but there's so much that we're going to cover in there, again, in more depth than what we've looked at uh, to date, and um, and all I get and get understanding, and that price, I didn't know the, the price, everybody that knows me knows I'm not doing this for money, but when you say we got 165 pages, and, um, and that we're going to, you know, sell them for ten dollars, uh, that does not that does not cover the cost of putting them together. Um, and so, you know, if, if you love the Lord, you love the word, we promise you that uh, you're going to get a thousand times that value uh, from joining us. And that's what we want you to do is join us. Yeah. Yep. So Tish and Clothing again tonight, blueletterbible.org. You can search it by words. You can search it by strong numbers. You can search by verse. Um, that's awesome. You showed us how to go, not just in English, but into the interlinear. Look at the original words, the root words, and all of that. And you even showed us how to look at the uh, the parsings of those words. Is it a noun? Is it a verb? Et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And, and I'll just say that that will come in handy, like I mentioned, Isaiah 9 and 6. There's only one of those descriptions in there that's not a noun. Yeah. Okay? Wonderful counselor. It says he's going to be called wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. One of those is a verb. Mm -hmm. When you look in uh, Exodus 3, 14, uh, he tells Moses to just tell them I am that I am. And again, a lot of times people think that is a, yeah, yeah just show that real quick. So based on what you showed us, what you showed us here, we can look and see that, uh, oh, that's I am that I am. Yeah. Yeah. And when you look at that, I am, and you click that, what does it say it is? It's a verb. So how do we know that? We know that because Letitia J. Campbell taught us tonight how to find that. And we could have found that by putting in quotes, I am that I am. Yeah. If we didn't know it was Exodus 3.14, um, but we could put it in Exodus 3.14. Yep. And even if I don't put it in quotes, you guys see how it pulled up the exact phrase first? And then I am the that I am. There it is. The remaining match. And, and, and at the right, you have how many times that's used, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another one y'all can do, and this is the last thing I'll mention. <laughs> like in the Bible, the word Lord. That chart at the right hand side that shows every book of the bible um there's only two books in the whole bible where the word lord and god are not used in them mm -hmm. can you imagine that a whole book and it never mentions the lord or god one time which books are those well i'm not going to tell you letitia j has showed y'all how <laughs> to search the word for yourself and that's and what uh-huh I just want to say the reason we started with this tutorial was because these tools will be helpful as we dig into the foundation. I know y'all are screaming for a part two, so we might have to see how we can get that on the calendar, but plan to join us next Monday. Everybody say next Monday. Next Monday. February 27th, we plan on starting the requirements, the study of the six principles of the doctrine of Christ, and we're going to make sure we get it. And we'll make a concerted effort on this Monday class mm -hmm. to use the tools you gave us in that order so that they can see how we approach it 
and walk through it with uh, with the class. Yep. Um, and invite somebody to join with you. And if there is a group that, let's say, the Ministers Alliance at your church, you all can do this together. And on the off Monday or in your Sunday school class, you can discuss what we're talking about in those. So pray, get your workbook at least for yourself. And first Mondays of the month will be pastors only. But next Monday will be the last Monday in February. So that will be public and we'll kick off the foundation. And then first Mondays will be just pastors and we'll announce all these dates. And when you order, you have a checklist that has the dates. That right. You but this to coming go. Monday, join us and then we'll, yeah. This join Monday. us the next Monday, which is February what date? 27th. Join us February 27th. You join us and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, Go down this understanding street uh, as the Lord helps us. Ready to pray? Yes, let's pray. Father, we say thank you for allowing us to be here one more time. Again, God, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that was imparted to us tonight, we pray, God, that you help it sink into our hearts, our minds, our spirits, our soul, even into our intellect, God. Help us to use these tools to the glory of God, to gain further understanding of your word. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen, 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 amen. Get your workbook. <laughs>